This is rental car number 158, and today I'm driving the 2021 Tesla Model 3 Standard Plus. Uh, this retails for about $36,000, although Tesla claims after tax rebates you can get it down to about thirty k, which is pretty insane. Uh, this is by far the most expensive rental I have ever had. It cost a whopping $160 for 24 hours, but as you'll see, it was uh, worth every penny. I've got too much to share with you so much uh, just to give you a quick taste we will look at the interior and uh, take some time to look at the touchscreen and all the features there there's a ton to talk about i'll take it for a spin at low and high speeds i'll even take it out on the highway and get it above 95. i'll take it for your drive in the snow i recently got about nine inches while i rented this so uh why not I'll show you a little bit about one pedal driving, which is something I'm pretty excited about. And then we'll close things out with storage and I will give it a rating from one to five. Now, look, I admit this is a longer video than I usually make, maybe too long for you. So if I'm talking about something you're not thrilled about, use the chapters below to skip to something more interesting. All right, so uh, that's my little bit of housekeeping. Let's jump right in, open up the hood and uh, take a look what's underneath. So, um, it's an EV, so we got no engine here. This is what Tesla calls the frunk, and it's just a small storage space. Uh, it was perfect for me when I went and got some takeout while I rented this vehicle. Um, but not a whole lot else under here, except for the uh, little port that you can use to add windshield wiper fluid. Another unique feature is the door handles. Uh, they're flush with the door panel itself, so you have to push on one side to get the handle to pop out, and then you can pull the door towards you. Uh, I gotta admit, this was a little tough at first. Actually, I had no idea how to open the door. Uh, but after you do it a couple of times, it's uh, pretty intuitive and works really nicely. And it adds just that extra bit of style on the vehicle, which is always nice. All right, I jumped to the driver's seat. Uh, let's take a look around because things are pretty different. Let's start with the steering wheel. Uh, attractive logo in the center and then two directional keypads on either side. No other buttons of any kind, including wrapped around the back of the steering wheel. You do get two stalks. The one on the left controls your turn signal and your uh, windshield wiper fluid. And then the one on the right is actually your gear shift and your parking brake. So you will just push this up or down to switch through the gears and then press the button right here on the side to put it in park or press and hold to activate the electronic parking brake. Everything else is controlled through the center display right here. And to activate and deactivate things, you can use the touch screen right here, or you can use these two directional keypads right here to sort of scroll and select things on the center display. You can also press and hold the right center keypad. Open glove box to give it a command and then it will activate and do what you've asked it to do. So I just showed you how to open the glove box. Let me show you real quick. There's no latch or anything on this at all. You can only open it from either going through the menu structure in the center display or giving it an audible command through uh, this touch button right here, touch button keypad button. So one thing that does take a little getting used to is there's no push button start anywhere on this vehicle. When you open the door and you have the key in your pocket, everything is already on once you climb in. There's no button or anything on the dash. In fact, there's nothing at all on the dash or anything on the stocks too, right? There's not a button that you would push to turn the vehicle on. If you want to drive anywhere, either you need to have a phone with the app on it or you have to have a key card. It looks like this in a nice attractive casing and uh, just looks like a small credit card, right? Tesla's logo on the front, kind of some simple instructions on the back. You tap it in this area of the vehicle, and then the car recognizes that you are in control, and then you can simply hit the brake pedal down, shift it into drive, and away you go. So this, uh, this takes some getting used to, and it's a little bit overwhelming at first, but uh, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Uh, also, nothing on the dash at all. So you, you don't have your, your hood release, you don't have your fuel cap release, there's, there's no buttons of any kind down here, and there are no vents either for the climate control systems, right? Typically you'll see something right here. The vent is actually this little cutout that you see above the steering wheel. That's the vent, that's where either your heat or your cooling will come from. Um, so it's just 
It's impeccably designed. Everything has been thought out and it's so different from a normal car that it makes it a lot of fun to hang out in. To the left of the steering wheel, we have almost your standard controls. I mean, all we have are our window controls right here and then a button to exit the vehicle. So this is what you have to press to open a door. Now the door is open and you can exit the vehicle. Beyond that, there are no controls here of any kind, which gives it a very sleek and very upscale kind of look. You also have different kinds of leather. Well, this is plastic, right? And then this is like a suede leather material right here, but this just feels really, really premium. No door lock right here, right? We have just a sleek plastic panel. It's very simple and makes the car feel um, calmer, in my opinion. Rear view mirror, pretty standard stuff. You do not have blind side detection on this, but that's okay because when you're driving, if you want to, you can look at the center display to see everything that's going around uh, the vehicle while you're driving in real time. It's quite amazing. Up top, we have uh, a pretty attractive looking rear view mirror, right? No buttons on here of any kind. Uh, above there, we have pin lights and then your hazard button right up here, which is a different location than I'm used to, but you know, hey, it's kind of different. You also have the sun visor kind of curves up a little bit to uh, match the curve of the roof. And when you open it up, you'll see that you do have a mirror right here that folds down in two sections and lights up when you open it up, kind of nice. And you get that same feature on the passenger side as well. Below there, we have the large touch screen. I'll show you that in a second. And then below there, again, suede material um, uh, to charge your phone. So it has contact charging right here. A small cutout right here with additional storage. Uh, kind of a, a deep area with a removable uh, rubber lining at the bottom. Two cup holders right here. And then you have your center armrest white exposed stitching, very smooth leather, simple control right here to open it up. And then you have another storage compartment in here with a light, and then also you have a DC power port as well. All right, let's take a look at the center display. Uh, first off, it's absolutely enormous. And this doesn't feel like a typical display on uh, most of the sedans I have driven, even the higher end ones. This feels like a premium iPad. The resolution on this is it's insane. It's just so crisp and beautiful that it's hard to look away from. On the left hand side we have the car itself and you can just push areas to activate things. So you can open up the trunk, that trunk space in the front of the vehicle, the trunk in the back, your fuel port right here, and then you can lock and unlock the vehicle by simply pressing the vehicle itself. So really intuitive controls and we see the charge up here. Right now I'm at 91 uh, percent, which is uh, pretty decent. And then we have dedicated menu buttons all along the bottom to activate uh, pretty much everything on the vehicle. So if you press the car vehicle, you get your settings screen where you can cycle through and turn on and off features like, for example, autopilot. We could turn it on or off or manipulate the settings a little bit. This is really easy to use, and I think that's because the screen is so large, so you can actually see the full menu structure laid out right next to everything, uh, and it makes it really simple to find what you're looking for. Uh, for example, we can go to the quick controls screen, and then I can select mirrors, left or right, and then I can use these directional keypads to adjust the mirror to exactly how I like it. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with every setting on here, but I, I do wanna go over some of the main features on the vehicle. So obviously you have a huge nav screen that you can see all around you and, and know instantly when your next turn is. This is amazing. You can also, also uh, activate your entertainment features, right? Here's music. You still get your navigation screen, but then also you can use uh, other things like cycling through the radio, playing what's over your phone, a streaming service, and so on and so forth. And then to make it go away, you just tap the music button again, and it goes away. We have our cameras, so rear view and side out the back. Uh, there are a ton of cameras on this vehicle, and just look at the screen resolution. I mean, it is so crisp. I know. 
not a super attractive view, but you can see the parking space behind me and the snow built up all around, and you can see same views on the left and right of the vehicle. Um, it's just amazing and makes parking this thing an absolute breeze. And to make it go away, we can press the X up here or just simply hit the menu icon again. We can activate things like our windshield wipers from here, press this button to get pop-ups to a lot more things. So we can see an energy tab to see how far we can drive before we're on empty and what our fuel economy, our fuel consumption is over time. This is just absolutely amazing how much information uh, you can get. We also have heated and heated seats for both the uh, driver and the passenger. I'm going to keep that off for the passenger and low for me. Climate controls right here. You can see how beautiful this is, right? I showed you a second ago where the actual um, the air comes from. It's from this little crease right here built into the dash and it's just a beautiful icon to show you um, that there is airflow through the vehicle and then a nice big indicator right here to adjust the temperature inside the vehicle, defroster settings, and then a volume control uh, down here. So let's look at some of the toy box settings on here. Press the up arrow, go over to toy box on the far right hand side and uh, we can do things like control the horn sound. So let's activate it and hit the fart command. What's really interesting is that they've recorded a bunch of different types. So it changes each time you try it, which is just really, really impressive. There's a bunch more. Uh, maybe a ta-da. Pretty satisfying. Um, I'm not going to replace the horn with that. Um, we can also have uh, a couple other things. So we can hit emissions and we can make the vehicle fart uh, in different seats, which is always kind of fun. So let's do the passenger seat. Not sure if you can hear it, but it's coming from this side of the vehicle. Now it's coming from the back. You hear the difference? And now I'll let it be from me. That's pretty hilarious. Um, and then we have a ton of other stuff. Romance, for example. You want to get cozy with me for a second? Sounds fantastic, too. Oh, wow. Didn't see that coming. Um, and then tracks is another one where we could actually make our own music from inside the vehicle, which, uh, I mean, I guess if you're stuck waiting for someone to come out of a, maybe a building or something, this could be a lot of fun. And then boom box as well, so where you can make the sounds actually go outside of the vehicle for the people around us. Uh, pretty amazing, right? I've never had a car that had anything remotely like this. Uh, and I think that shows just what it's capable of doing when you have this much technology and software driving the vehicle. Um, what's even more fun is that Tesla can do new stuff and upload it to you uh, to give you access to it really at any point. So you don't know what kind of fun stuff is going to come in the future. Anyway, uh, this was pretty fun and uh, hard not to play with over and over again. So uh, all in all, I mean, I'm super impressed. Got to be honest, I was slightly overwhelmed when I first got into the vehicle just because it's so different, but after driving it around for a while, it, it feels like it makes sense and it's really easy to get the settings and the features that you want uh, just by making a couple of taps on the screen. All right, I jumped in the passenger seat. Nice big of leg room, right? I have this seat pushed back the same distance I do the driver's seat, and I have plenty of space for my legs. I'm six feet tall, and I feel super comfortable right now. I don't know, what do you think? Maybe six to eight inches between my knees and that dash, uh, which is just wonderful. Not a whole lot of amenities. I mean, all you have over here is your window control and then the button that you use to open up the door, because as I showed you before, there are no manual door locks on this thing of any type. You have to push this button to unlock and then the door will pop open and allow you to exit. Now you do have a glove box, but as a passenger I can't access that at all unless the center display is turned on. Now because we don't have a driver that has automatically turned off, to get it to turn on I'm just going to open the door a little bit, so I'm going to press this button. Now we have access to that center display and to open the glove box we can either use the manual controls right here uh, to talk to the vehicle or we can find it in the settings screen. So I'm going to hit the car icon, go over here and uh, hit the glove box button. 
now it opens up for us. Not a huge glove box, pretty small. Uh, you basically only have room for your owner's manual right here and then an adapter in case you aren't going to use Tesla's uh, supercharging uh, power stations. If you use a standard one, you are going to have to use this adapter uh, to make it compatible with the Tesla. So a nice felt lining inside, uh, quality feel to it, but not a ton of storage. All right, so I jumped in the passenger seat of the back seat, the rear seat. I'm six feet tall and uh, I don't know, I'm not super comfortable. I have this seat pushed back a good distance, uh, not all the way. Uh, despite that, I still have maybe two or three inches between my knees and the back of that seat. Although I do feel like I have to sit pretty upright. Uh, let me show you real quick. So it's hard for me to sort of slouch because then my, my knees end up hitting that seat. So I have to sit, I don't know, like I'm meditating or something, right? Like I'm really upright. And my head does brush up against the glass ceiling just a little bit. So I'm not super comfortable, um, but I mean, I could ride back here for a couple hours without having huge complaints. As far as amenities, they're the same as the uh, front seat passenger window controls and that button to open up the, um, the door. Up top, we have a small hook right here that we can use to hang a jacket. On the back of the seats, we have small pockets uh, made out of a nice leather material. Not a lot of give, so really this is only gonna be good for something really small, like maybe a, one of the smaller owner's manuals. On the back of the center armrest for the front seat passengers, we do have two dedicated vents. And then additionally, in the center, we have a armrest that folds down with two uh, cup holders. And then the last thing I want to look at is car seat anchors. Now we do have the icon right here, letting us know that the anchor's right here. And then if you can see, Without really manipulating the seats at all, we have access to the car seat anchors. That's that white metal bar right there, and that is wonderful. That means that if you do need to install a car seat back here, it's going to be relatively simple. Not true on all vehicles. On some of them, you have to pry these seats open and reach way back to get access to those. All right, let's look really quickly at the trunk space. Uh, not a whole lot of excitement back here, although you do get a pretty big storage area, and there's an additional storage space underneath the floor. Uh, this little bag right here is for your uh, charging port if you actually carry it around with you. And also the rear seats do fold down really easily. You just pull up on these little tabs right there and then they fold down. And you have even more space if you want to haul a larger item and have it poke through the back of the trunk and into the cabin of the vehicle. So all in all, pretty standard stuff, but uh, nice to know that you have some additional storage back here if you need it. All right, so let's take this thing for a spin. I'm gonna shift us into drive, and uh, off we go. First thing I wanna look at is handling at lower speed. So I'm talking like under 15 miles an hour, maybe under 20. So we're just tooling around a parking lot right now. And let me just do some quick turns around these light poles. Now the turning radius is really, really nice. It doesn't feel like it drifts at all. And the responsiveness of the steering is, uh, well, it's impressive. Uh, sometimes with vehicles, even this size, when you make a turn, you just have that ever so slightly delay before you actually go where you wanna, where you wanna go. But uh, not with this vehicle at all. Responsiveness is top notch, and that makes parking it uh, a breeze. And that includes parking in reverse, which is rather easy because of all the cameras on this uh, vehicle. Let me just show you real quick. So let's reverse into one of these parking spots. So. We're gonna put the car into reverse. And now you can see we have lots of views to show us exactly where we're going. And then also guides as well. So as I manipulate the steering wheel, you're seeing that those white guides are moving for me as well. Just making it really, really simple to park the vehicle. So I'm about to pull into my garage. One of my favorite features on this vehicle is that it actually tells you how close you're getting to an obstruction. So watch this screen right here as we pull forward. And the Tesla is going to give us feedback and show us exactly how far the wall is from the front of the vehicle. So here we get a little feedback. You're seeing those yellows appear and those, it's starting to recognize the object. Now 33 inches, 25, 24. It's pretty cool. Right now we know we're 17 inches away from that wall ahead of us, rather than just getting a red bar and kind of having to guess 
for those last couple of inches, but now I know exactly how far I need to pull forward before I'm gonna hit something. At lower speeds too, you, you really get to appreciate the how silent this vehicle is because you don't have an engine always revving up. Um, all you really hear is, is the wheels on the road and a little bit of wind, which I don't know why, but it, it makes me feel a little bit calmer as I'm driving this vehicle. So at low speeds, I am really, really impressed. Uh, but you know, it, there's not a lot to complain about any vehicle when you're talking about driving it at 20 miles an hour. Let's get out on the road and take it up to about 40, 45 and see how it does through some gentle curves. All right, so I got the vehicle up to about 35, 40 miles an hour, and we just have a couple of real ten gentle curves uh, down this road. Um, and I gotta say, the responsiveness is even more impressive at, at this speed. Uh, I'm, I'm still not completely used to driving this car. It's only been a couple of hours since I got it, but I mean, I feel like I can easily hug this crease right here between the blacktop and the curb itself uh, really effortlessly because the car is just, it's so tight, which is kind of dangerous because it makes me want to drive a lot more aggressively than I would in my normal daily driver. Let's uh, try a U-turn real quick and see what the turning radius is like. Oh yeah, I mean, there's no chance I'm drifting out of the lane. That was, that was effortless. I didn't even have to crank the steering wheel all the way. Um, so let's, let's see how far I can push it where I start to feel a little uncomfortable. All right, so I'd say at these curves, 50, which is, which is outstanding. And I know the car can go faster around these curves. I'm just saying my own personal comfort level. And I'm just trying to show you that, uh, wow, is that a lot of fun to drive. So handling at higher speeds is uh, fun. And now let's do the obvious test of acceleration, because that's really what these cars are known for. You know, you got an electric motor, so you have instant torque available to you. Let me come to a complete stop. Oh, there's a policeman. No, private security. Okay, we're good. I'm going to slow down to a complete stop and uh, hit that accelerator. Yeah, we just hit 40. That's, uh, that's a little bit insane. Uh, there might not be any cops around here, but I am not going to push it past that. The acceleration is just, it's nuts. It's instant, uh, and you feel it in your stomach as it's just pulling you forward. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And the same is true even if you're moving. So right now we're going about 40. If I just push down on that accelerator ever so slightly, it is an instant burst of speed. Uh, I know you've probably heard other people say that before, but I am talking the second you push your, your foot down on that pedal, you are rocketing forward and um, man, it's quite addictive. I'm not gonna lie. I can see why so many people fall in love with this vehicle so quickly. All right, so this vehicle doesn't have full autopilot. And by that, mean, by that I mean you can't uh, put in an address in here and have the car change lanes and navigate for you all the way uh, to your destination. But it can sense the lanes in the road and keep uh, the speed limit based on the speed limit signs on the side of the road. All you need to look for is to see if the car is sensing the lines in the road. So you see here where you can see the lines going by and you can see the traffic up ahead. Once we have that, we're gonna adjust the stock down twice. We're gonna hit it twice to go to the cruise control setting. All right, so we're gonna do one, two. All right, so now the car is driving completely on its own, keeping with the lanes in the road. It will not, however, stop for us up ahead. So I am hitting the brake pedal myself to bring us to a complete stop. But now that traffic is going again, I can hit that stock again twice. One, two. All right. And it is saying it can't sense the lines in the road, so auto steer is unavailable. You can see how it's not a perfect system quite yet, especially in conditions like this where the road is pretty sloppy. All right, let's try once more. Our, our, we have traffic pretty far ahead. It's sensing the lines in the road. One, two. All right. It knows the uh, speed limit is 40 and it's steering for us. So no hands, no feet on the wheel. And now the car is driving for us. It knows the speed limit maximum is 40 miles an hour based on the signs on the road. And it's keeping us a safe distance from that car ahead and keeping inside the lines pretty well, I might add, considering how sloppy the road conditions are. I don't know, this is pretty amazing. 
Um, and despite only using this for a short period of time, I don't know why, but I feel awfully comfortable letting the car drive for me, even in conditions like this, which uh, says a lot for Tesla's trustworthiness. Anyway, I just wanted to show you really quick. It's quite a fun feature to play around with. So another thing we need to look at is, is cabin noise. And by that, I mean, how much of the outside can you hear while you're driving at reasonable speeds? So I'm going 45 miles an hour right now, which I think is a pretty average and typical speed you do while driving a car like this. And let me just be quiet for a second so you can hear what the outside sounds like while you're driving. So we can hear the bumps in the road a little bit. You can hear the things in the vehicle that I have with me right now sh just shaking around ever so slightly. And a little bit of wind, right? But the car is so aerodynamic and so tightly constructed that uh, compared to any other vehicle at this price point, uh, I think this is top notch. I can still hear a little bit about what's going around the vehicle, which, I mean, I don't want it to be absolutely silent, uh, but it's, it's pretty quiet which makes listening to things over the entertainment uh, that much easier. So let me turn on the radio real quick. I will, uh, I'll be quiet and we can listen. So not bad, right? Uh, really easy to hear the lyrics. Uh, I didn't even have to turn that up at all. And the volume is on a very, very low setting. So I don't know. Cabin noise is pretty exceptional. I, I, I feel like I'm still looking for something to criticize on this vehicle. All right, so let's take this thing out on the highway and see what it's like at higher speeds. Uh, we're lucky right now that there's no one behind me. So when I get through this toll booth, I'm going to pull to a complete stop and we can play around with acceleration. All right, there's a slight incline, but uh, should be a good test. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Woo! I felt like I was getting an ab workout because, I mean, the acceleration is so intense that I feel like I need to brace myself for it, uh, which is, uh, it's a new experience. All right, so now we're at uh, a new experience for me. We're at 75 right now cruising along on the interstate. Uh, car feels very, very stable at this speed. I don't feel like we're anywhere near its limitations. Uh, and uh, handling is still extremely responsive. So just even the slightest movement of the steering wheel is getting us an instant turn. And even though I'm doing that, I still feel like I'm really in control of the vehicle. Cabin noise is a little bit more pronounced. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, I am having to raise my voice just a little bit. But it's not obnoxious. Uh, it needs to be expected, especially when we're going almost 80 miles an hour. Uh, so let me do a lane change real quick. That felt pretty good. And uh, let's do it again, and let's see if we can pass this, uh, what is this, a RAV4 in front of us? So I'm gonna change lanes and accelerate around this car. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're at 90 right now. Uh, that took no effort. What I mean by that is I barely hit the accelerator. I mean, maybe I pushed it down half a centimeter and we rocketed forward to 90 miles an hour, uh, which is, man, this thing is dangerous. I, I, if I was driving this to work every morning, I mean, I'd go 100 easy without even thinking about it. It's that responsive and, and that quick, uh, which uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, so we got a car who's passing us. I just, I feel personally insulted right now that I would let a Hyundai Accent, a car I like, by the way, pass us like that. So uh, let's see if we can catch up with him. 90, 95. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I want to try and go over 100 right now, but uh, I also don't want to lose my license because there's a lot of cops out here. That is just, I mean, it's just insane. It's just insane. Look, you have to try this. If if you have the means, please, please go out and take this for a test drive. It's, it's an experience that you just need to have yourself. I'm doing my best to explain it to you, but this is unlike anything that I have driven in the past, I don't know, 
300 rentals that I've done. I don't typically post every time I rent a vehicle, uh, but this is outstanding. A, a ton of fun, a dangerous vehicle in my hands, so I'm going to exit the freeway now and go back to some normal speeds. All right, so we got about nine inches of snow last night. My street hasn't been plowed that well. I'm really curious how well the Tesla is going to perform. This is quite a bit of snow and uh, this is a small car. All right, so responsiveness is still, I mean, pretty good. I have uh, full control over the vehicle, whether I'm in these uh, little rivets or not. Let's make sure we don't get hit by this plow going back and forth. I think he's doing this guy's driveway. All right, well, clearly I can't accelerate like really fast. Uh, actually, I'm trying right now and we're, we're staying steady at about 20 miles an hour. Uh, but this is pretty good so far. Uh, I feel like I have control over the vehicle and I'm definitely moving forward at a good speed. I'm still amazed at just how quiet this thing is. I can't hear anything at all except for, let me get around this car. Oop, slipping a little bit. Can't hear anything rather than just, just the wheels on the road. It's kind of nice, it's a little bit calm. All right, let's get around this corner. Ooh, a little trouble getting through that big bit of snow. All right, now we're on the roads. Oh, wow. Yeah, that picked up immediately. And now all of a sudden the full acceleration comes back into play and uh, it's handling really well. Let's get around this corner, see if we slip. Nope. No slipping at all and I took that pretty aggressively. All right. Let's get onto this road, which has been fully plowed after this car. Yeah, now we should have full, ex oh yeah. Man, I will n never get used to that. When you hit the accelerator and you move forward so quickly, it is just so, so much fun. So uh, all things considered, I'm pretty impressed. This handles better than uh, a lot of the SUVs I've driven in the snow. So one of the features on the Model 3 that I've really grown to like a lot is one pedal driving. So typically when you're in a gas powered car and you let your foot off the accelerator, it's gonna coast a little bit and then eventually you're gonna come to a stop. With the Tesla, when you get to lower speeds and lift your foot off the pedal, it'll actually come to a complete stop and hold and it does it so responsively that uh, you can actually not touch the brake in normal driving scenarios. So really, as I've been driving around town, the only time I've had to hit the brake pedal is when I need to stop suddenly because someone has cut me off or there's an obstruction in the road. But when I come up to a stop sign or a stoplight, for example, I typically get the car to stop almost entirely without touching the brake pedal. So let me give you an example. You see that there's a red, uh, a red light coming up ahead. Uh, I am not going to touch the brake pedal. Instead, I'm just going to slow the vehicle down a little bit. And then when I get to the point where I actually want to stop, I'm just going to lift my foot off of uh, the accelerator completely and the vehicle's going to come to a stop. Nice. And now that the auto hold setting is enabled, it's just going to hold the car in place until I put pressure on that accelerator and we move forward. Uh, look, this I'm sure this seems like a mild thing, but if you're doing a lot of stop and go driving like in the suburbs like I am right now, it's just it's just really nice. Um, and it's something that I've, I've never experienced before. Uh, so again, we're coming up on a red light rather than hitting that brake pedal. All I'm doing is picking my foot ever so slightly off the accelerator. Now my foot is completely off the accelerator and we're coming to a complete stop. And now we need to go. So I'm pushing down on that accelerator once more uh, to give us some lift. Small feature, but uh, one of those extra things on the Model 3 that I've just really come to like quite a bit. All right, so that's pretty much everything end to end on the 2021 Tesla Model 3. Um, Look, I, I love this car. It's so different from everything else I've driven lately that it makes every second behind the wheel exciting. So if this is the future, man, I'm all in. I am sold. So you won't be surprised that I'm going to give this one five stars. Look, honestly, what's not to like here? If you want an EV, this is the one you should buy. It's simply amazing.
Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I'm back renting my 159th rental car. I'll see you then.